outside after class. <laughs> That's awesome. I, 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 I heard that they might be coming by, but I didn't know what they were going to say. And I, the, 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 I, but I'm, I, but that's, that fits perfectly with, 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 with this story, actually. This is the, it, it couldn't be better. Because uh, actually standing up for research uh, into agroecology and to, uh, for standing up for, for research into things that, that move us away from uh, this kind of green revolution model uh, is important. And in, in the last five, I, I'm, uh, Mark, you, you'll forgive me, I'm going to run, run over just by five minutes. Um, because that was about how long that took. Uh, so uh, 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 just, uh, uh, I, I, I just, I, I want to get to a, a clip about um, some of the work where you, you have an example of people resisting uh, this kind of, um, I mean, reinventing the food system. And as we've seen, you know, if, if the green revolution, the long green revolution is about concerns of distribution as well as engineering new kinds of crop, right? If the, if the sort of uber signifying technology of the, um, of the green revolution is the fence, I wonder what the, 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 the kind of technology of the, uh, of the, 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 the resistance to it is. And I, in fact, I'll, I'll leave that as an open question for you. But, but I, I want to just give you a, the, the sort of story about a, a project that, that I'm working on with some colleagues in Malawi and, and documenting for this film. Uh, generation food, and what's I mean the the the, the run up to it's very very easy. That uh, in 1999 the life expectancy in Malawi is 47 years and falling, 47 years old, uh, largely because of the AIDS pandemic. Uh, and what happens uh, is that there are women who are working at a pediatric uh, uh, malnutrition unit, a child malnutrition unit in a local hospital, and they want the kids to survive and they want the kids to live long. Uh, and they need to figure out ways of farming differently. Now, the main crop in Malawi, because of processes of colonialism and of debt, are, uh, the, the main crop is basically corn. And monocultures of corn, just one you know, corn plant and a corn plant and a corn plant, don't, are, are not great for nutrition. So they figure out ways of farming agroecologically. They, they put uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, they have nitrogen fixing crops, uh, the, you know, beans, for example, that help improve soil quality. They, uh, they terrace the land in interesting ways to be able to capture more water. They um, rely, you know, they, they grow shade, uh, shady crops to be able to shade out the weeds. They use the farming systems of the three sisters here in, in, uh, you know, in, in, in the Americas of corn, bean, and, and squash, for example. Uh, and so they end up with uh, a high level of, of of corn, which is the sort of staple crop, and 50% more protein through, um, you know, this is not by genetically modifying anything, this isn't by uh, adding a whole lot of inorganic fertilizer, this is through intercropping and coming up with new ways of becoming scientists themselves. But they end up with this problem. You've got, uh, you've got a whole ton of food, and in fact, th th there's, there's a swath of people who've heard this before, so I'm gonna ask you to remain quiet to see if the students get this. Um, th you have a whole bunch more food and still infant malnutrition is high, and in fact, it can go up. So you've got more food, uh, and infant malnutrition goes up. Why? In the last 30 minutes, I've given you all the answers you need to be able to, to all the, the resources you need to be able to answer this. Yeah? Um, just because, well, from what I know, is that the federal government um, sub subsidizes foods such as corn, soybeans, and whatnot, and that's where you'll see the distilleries um, that have a lot of calories in them um, that go into our junk food, sodas, and whatnot, um, but don't have any real, real nutritional value. Well, in, I mean, it's, it's true that there are subsidies in the United States for corn, uh, for, for beans, no, not for beans, but for, for, for corn, for soy, uh, for wheat, and for cotton. Um, but this is in Malawi, there's, there's not a whole lot of federal su government subsidy for this. Plus, the crops that they're growing are actually really quite good for you. Um, this is not just about a monoculture, but they're growing a range of crops that actually leave them much better off. So it's, yes? Getting the food to, is it a problem about transportation? I mean, often in the United States, we think about you know, the good foods over here, but the poor people are over here. And so how, do, how, does that, how do we bridge that? In, in, in this particular case, the, the field's right there. So it's walking distance. It's very, very easy. It's their own, it's their own field. How else can you get, how, yes, sir? You're selling all the crops. Now, sometimes that, that's a problem, but a lot, a lot of this stuff is for, for domestic consumption. In fact, that, that, that's part of the goal here. Yes. 
the price is too high. Well, and sometimes, actually, that's a really, it's a really good point because sometimes if you're growing all this crop and then the international price is high, you would rather sell it and buy, buy the food when you need it than, um, than actually you know, eat, it, eat it all now. But not in this case because some of these crops have very limited international markets. Sir, over there. Perfect. There we are. Thank you. Um, so the, the, the answer is this, that in Malawi, uh, harvesting is women's work. But so is cooking and cleaning and fetching firewood and carrying water. And so is breastfeeding. And so when you have more harvesting to do, because this fantastic new system requires, uh, you know, produces more food, and it, th there is therefore uh, more work to be done in terms of harvesting. Uh, but then you've also got to carry the water and get the firewood, and then you have to breastfeed. Then uh, when there's more work to do and you still have to you know, cook, clean, carry, uh, ca carry water, then the breastfeeding can go down. So how do you fix that? The men should help. The men should help. <laughs> um, and that's right. I mean, uh, and it, it's, uh, 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 what, what we're going to show now is, is a clip where that happens. So, so, so what, what I want to show you essentially is a clip uh, about not only agroecology, about the, the, the way in which you can grow more food, uh, but also a, a clip about how democracy should work, right? I mean, if, if the Long Green Revolution has been about anxieties of the rich, about uh, the urban poor, this is a, a way of pushing back against that and saying, well, we should democratize food consumption, and this is kind of what it looks like. So in the, in, in, this is the last thing I want to do is just quickly give you a, a sense of, um, first, what's important, I mean, what, what's, you know, what a, uh, an agroecological system looks like, but then also what, this, what, what Alice Waters' delicious revolution looks like, what, what an egalitarian distribution of food can look like. And it looks like hard feminist, feminist organizing on the ground. And here it is. So actually, the, the, I'm, 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 I can't end it there, because I, I have to ju just quickly tell you that, I, in fact, Jennifer is now a le community leader who is mentoring other women in her community, even though her husband is not, uh, has not come round. The feminist organizing has worked. Um, it's not couples therapy. It's about women's empowerment. And for her, uh, for, 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 for Jennifer, um, it's, uh, it, she is now um, much stronger, much more engaged in her community, and she teaches agroecological farming to other women there. Um, and Anita is now spreading the, the word around about this way further south in, uh, in, in Malawi than, than where she lives. But I, I think what this points to is everything that you saw in that original picture around property, around ownership, around who gets to know how farming happens, around um, the, w where labor happens and talking about labor, all of that gets transformed in this example. Uh, and yes, there's much more about transforming the food system that we can and should talk about. But I think that, that what this example suggests uh, is that with, by combining things like agroecology agro and um, you know, democracy in the food system and joy and taste, uh, we can actually transform the food system together. So maybe that's a good place to lead off our conversation, Mark. Thank you.